Hey, James, how you doing? Very well, Julian. Nice to meet you. Uh, I congratulate you, sir, on a spectacular film. I saw the premiere at the Jewish Museum in Battery Park, and I was very, very, very moved. And when you brought those survivors on the stage, I was really impressed by the responsibility to really tell their story accurately, right? So my first question to you is, once you got the script, how do you go to make sure that everything you're telling is really the truth, given that a lot of these people are still alive? I went deep into the research uh, everywhere I could. So obviously there's there's biographies, there are autobiographies. Doreen Warren's character wrote a whole account of the time in Prague. Um, we spoke to the people who are living, who uh, either were themselves on the train, or whose parents had been involved in the rescue. So we went deep into the families and for their history. And we spoke to historians and museums who curated some of that past. So whether it was the Holocaust Educational Trust in London or the Prague Museums, those who knew particularly about the Nicky Winton story. We can't get everything exactly right. Somebody's gonna write and tell me that the trains are from the wrong era. It's already happening. But you get everything you possibly can as close to true and accurate as you can. You know, when you're when you're working with Anthony Hopkins, you're playing with house money as possibly the greatest actor of all time. But I wanna to talk to you about casting the young Nicholas Winton, Johnny Flynn, an actor who, who I've admired for years as a singer and an actor, and he's also absolutely brilliant in this film. So talk about casting him particularly as the young Winton. Well, I mean, part of the credit there goes to Nina Gold, our casting director. I've been lucky enough to work with Johnny before when he played the young Albert Einstein to Jeffrey Rush's older Einstein in the Discovery TV series. Um, Johnny is a very special thing because he is such a generous man and a generous actor. The, obviously, there's some similarity in the physical makeup of those two men. They have the same intensity in their blue eyes. They have a, a strength in their setting. But what really matters is the generous spirit and the warmth that they both exude. And uh, it was also about Johnny. I knew he'd be somebody who wouldn't feel the need to impose his version of Nicky on this performance. He would come in and as I suspected, he, he, would, he was incredibly respectful and thrilled to be there with Anthony, quite honestly. And they spent days together as Anthony was filming his sequences first, Johnny was on the edge of the set watching the process, talking about choices that Anthony was making for performance, talking about the research they'd jointly done so that it would infuse one performance rather than have two running in any way out of step. Oh, that's a brilliant answer, mate. All right, so, so here's a hard question, right? What do you say to some historians who say that maybe Nicholas Winton gets too much credit because he was, you know, ostensibly safe in England while, like, you know, Doreen and Trevor were hiding from the Gestapo and really doing the, you know, the, the actions of bringing the children to the trains and shepherd them. What do you say to that, that, that criticism? Uh, that it's not a criticism, that it's absolutely fair that the first person to have agreed with them would have been Nicholas Winton who said the only reason he really got all the credit was because he was the guy who lived longest. Um, that the story had been quiet because the generation after the war spent most of their time leaving that into their past so hideous for the things they'd seen in Pope We went out of our way in this film to include those other individuals. We made sure, unlike some tellings of the story in the past, that Dorian Warren, that Trevor Chadwick, that Martin Blake, and that the Czech volunteers are also represented and their contribution is very powerfully heard through the story in this film. Great answer. All right, so they give me the wrap notice, but I'm at end of another serious question. So, you know, there's so much going on in the world where all these children are, are facing war. And, and not to get political, but what do you want people who see this movie to take the message away from it that can basically apply to every situation where children are in danger? There are two messages. One is that Nikki would be appalled that we haven't learned the lessons from the Second World War and that so much is so similar now. And we should look at ourselves and ask, why is that the case? The second is that Nikki would say you treat all children the same. It's not about race or creed or ethnicity or, or social status. They should all be treated the same, given the same chances and given the chance to live and to survive and not die in the wars that we grown-ups impose on them. Bravo. Great film. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Julian.